Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, PLM 101 in Industry Perspective. My name is Rachel Cachado, and I will be your moderator for today's discussion. Before we get started today, I have a few housekeeping items to go over. Everyone attending this session today is in listen-only mode, but we'd like to hear from you through the questions box in your control panel or by tweeting us at, at vertexvis. We will be answering your questions at the end of the webinar today. Joining me today is Don Hopped. Don worked with Caterpillar from 1979 to 2017 in a variety of roles, including lead business process strategist and technical steward for PLM and engineering systems. He has significant experience in product design, simulation and validation, engineering processes, PLM strategy and process, and environment and systems definition. Don's experience as the strategic technical director for PLM World also contributes to his expertise with PML. PLM, excuse me. Today, Don is enjoying retirement and serving as a PLM consultant, providing customized technical guidance and counsel for engineering management and engineering design processes. Without further ado, I will hand it over to you, Don. Well, thank you, Rachel. It's good to be here today and uh, to talk some about PLM. Just so we have an idea of where we're headed with this webinar, uh, going to cover, cover uh, several different areas. We'll, we'll spend a little bit of time understanding what PLM is, uh, look at it from uh, uh, a vision and value perspective, uh, what the value is to the business. Uh, talk a little bit about PLM and its relationship to uh, Industry 4.0, uh, and then we'll have some time uh, at the end for some uh, uh, Q&A and uh, be happy to answer whatever questions you might have uh, at that point. So let's begin. Uh, we'll put uh, a little bit of definition to uh, to what PLM is. And I'd like to start uh, this, this discussion by just uh, considering uh, a number of different companies. I'm sure you're all familiar with the logos that you see here, uh, the products that they produce. Uh, but let me ask just this one question. Uh, as you look at them and you consider that, what what are they what are they like? What is the same about these companies, and and what's different? What do they have in common? Well, one thing they all do is they all design and they manufacture products. Uh, they all need to get these products to the marketplace, and they're all trying to make a profit. That's why they're in business is to make money. And so, uh, in order to do that, they all have a need to create and to manage and to share the information about that product. And the best way to do that is with PLM or uh, product lifecycle management. Now you can go out to Google and uh, just uh, search on PLM, search on product lifecycle management, whatever, and you will find an absolute wealth of information about PLM. You'll also find that there are a number of different ways to define it. Uh, and while there isn't one definition that the industry has adopted, there are a number of common uh, key concepts that you'll find uh, virtually in every definition that, that you'll you'll see. Things like uh, process of managing the entire life cycle, that it's an all-encompassing approach, that uh, it has to do with product information management, and that term in particular will become uh, a very important concept as we go through today. Uh, and the product information backbone, all of these things uh, begin to form the core principles of what PLM is. Now, there is an organization uh, that exists called SimData. Uh, they are probably the, the world's leading independent strategic management consulting and research authority that is focused purely on PLM. Uh, they, they are not linked to any particular software vendor. They're not linked to any particular process type, uh, but they, they uh, focus purely on PLM. In their definition of PLM, you can see on the screen, uh, some key things there is that this is a strategic business approach uh, to solving the problem of managing the complete set of product definition, de product, sorry, product definition information. Uh, how do you create it? How do you disseminate it? And how do you use it across the extended enterprise? And you do that throughout the entire life cycle of the product. So PLM, uh, in its definition, you'll notice that it is not uh, a piece or pieces of technology. 
in, in fact, it's much, much more than technology. This is a common misconception about what PLM is, is that it's just a piece of software or a tool. Uh, it is an approach uh, in which the processes that you use are as important, if not more important, than the data that those processes are managing. Uh, it, it's, it's just as concerned with how a business works with uh, what is created. So I'm sure you've picked up already that uh, um, one of the most important aspects about PLM is managing product definition information. Uh, well, information includes all media types. It can be uh, electronic, it can be hard copy, it can be this file or that, uh, this artifact or that. PLM is primarily concerned with managing the digital information or the virtual representation of the product. Uh, not there are aspects of the physical product as well, but PLM is more concerned with the with the virtual representation. And so, with all of that in mind, let me suggest this as a uh, a reasonable definition for PLM from an industrial perspective. And that would be uh, PLM is the processes and technologies that enable collaborative innovation of virtual assets across the enterprise value stream. So I'll just pause for a minute and, and maybe just read that again because this is a, an important concept that uh, uh, PLM is the processes and technologies that enable collaborative innovation of virtual assets across the entire uh, enterprise value stream. And so you can you, you can see that the PLM is inclusive. There are a lot of things to that. If you think about what it takes to develop a complete set of product information, uh, that encompasses the whole enterprise, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of things you need to know. Uh, it is inclusive, but it isn't one process system or tool. Uh, and what you see on the screen here are just some representative samples of some of the types of systems and tools that would fall within the PLM landscape. So you've got uh, configuration management. You obviously have simulation, uh, computer aided engineering, virtual product development. Uh, you've got bill of material management, requirements management, you have cost management, and you certainly have manufacturing engineering and computer-aided uh, manufacturing. And so uh, with all that in mind, while PLM is inclusive, while it's not necessarily a single process, what is important is that the, the, the systems that you use and the tools that you choose are integrated very, very well and very tightly so that information can flow if effectively and efficiently throughout the value stream from one end to the other. If you've got an effective system established and, and in place, uh, that PLM system and environment then provides kind of the backbone for a company to do, uh, to do its business and, and to get uh, data flowing throughout the value chain. So regardless of where you are in the company, um, you can have access to the information that you need uh, and you can add your input to the product development process. So uh, we, can, we can break the misnomer or, or break the misunderstanding that PLM is specific to engineering, it's only engineering tools. No, it, it encompasses everyone from product development through process development to supporting that product in the field to what are you going to do with this product at the end of life? Uh, and, and then how are you going to uh, um, uh, retire whatever that product is, uh, is from service? And, and PLM then provides the backbone for everyone to see what they need to see uh, in the format that they need to see it in as well so that they can add their value to the product development uh, process. Now, up to this point, we've been talking a lot about virtual products. We've been talking about the, the digital representation there. And uh, if you recall, all of the companies that, that we started with, uh, they actually have physical product that they sell. That's, uh, that's what they're in business to do. And so obviously there is a physical product that we need to be concerned about. Well, there is an approach to managing that information as well. It's known as ERP or Enterprise Resource Planning. Uh, and we begin to see then, if you, if you consider all of the information that needs to be in play in uh, in a company's business cycle, we begin to see that there are two distinct but very, very interrelated domains that begin to emerge. One is more focused with uh, the innovation, uh, the virtual side of the business, and the other is more focused with the execution or physical side of the business. 
an innovation side tends to be more relational and more iterative, where where you you want to see changes and you want to know what the inner interrelationship is between the changes that you're making. On the physical side, on the execu execution side, that tends to be more transactional and more repetitive. So if you're in uh, a shop floor environment or or you're in a manufacturing environment, you don't want to see change. You want to be able to to do the same thing over and over and over again in a repetitive fashion. And then when you are faced with implementing some change, you want to do that in a very measured uh, process so that it doesn't completely disrupt things. But it's uh, it's important to note that in both the, the PLM and ERP spheres, the virtual and the physical spheres, they do overlap and they do overlap quite a bit. There is information that needs to be shared by both sides. Uh, and it's important to realize that PLM and ERP do not and they cannot operate independently of each other. Uh, both sides are creating information. Both sides need to share that information with the other. It isn't an us versus them scenario that sometimes you see in, in a, uh, uh, a large manufacturing company that also designs their product. Uh, this is very much a teamwork. It's just that there are two processes in two distinct domains that are required in order to process the information well uh, and, and get it get it to the uh, uh, to the marketplace. So let's summarize just a little bit. That's a, a lot of information that we've been throwing at you. Uh, PLM is a strategic business approach uh, that consists of both processes and technologies. It's collaborative uh, in how you create and manage and share that information across uh, the enterprise and across the value stream. It's concerned more with the virtual product and the, the virtual process definition. So uh, there, there's a lot of manufacturing information that's created in, in the uh, digital sense as well. So PLM is concerned with how do we do that. Uh, it does empower the entire engineered value chain uh, and it spans the full life cycle of the product from concept to end of life. That's what PLM is. Uh, there's some things that it is not. Uh, PLM is not about managing the physical product and process. We're not necessarily concerned with how you get, uh, the PLM is not concerned with how you get that piece of iron or that component that a supplier has made and transported to the facility and on the assembly line uh, in its particular order. Um, that's what the ERP system is for. And it's obviously using information from PLM to get to that point, but uh, PLM is not necessarily concerned with how we deal with the physical product. Uh, and it is not just software or specific technology platforms. PLM, uh, as, as we've said uh, a couple of times here, um, it is, is more concerned with, uh, with managing that information uh, and, and the process of going about doing that. So let's shift gears a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about uh, what, what a good PLM vision might be, uh, what the strategy is to get there, and, and what the value to your business is for having PLM. Uh, just like uh, driving in your car, um, it's a good idea to have uh, an idea of where you're going. Uh, it's been said that, said that if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. Uh, we don't want that to happen when we're implementing PLM systems. And so uh, this is really a two-part vision, if you will, and the first is make it visual. Uh, and if you think about it, uh, you've probably heard it said a number of times that a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, the same is true in a PLM environment. If you can show somebody what it is you're dealing with, if you can utilize the technologies that we have for building 3D models and uh, showing their interrelationship with one another, uh, utilizing that visual space, uh, it really communicates the message that you want to, uh, to say uh, very, very effectively. And so if we've got that in place, uh, it allows us to transition away from a bill of material uh, which is a uh, just a textual list of part numbers that are organized in a certain hierarchical fashion depending on on what part of the business you're in we transform transition away from this bill of material into what's uh, what's known as a bill of information and while those same part numbers that made up the the bill of material are a part of the bill of information now we start to see much more than just the part number associated with it now we have uh, the 3D representations, the CAD models, the metadata, 
all of the information that goes into describing those part numbers or those those uh, pieces of the product uh, are what forms the bill of information and things are aligned well so that you can see the complete set of information uh, as you're looking for it and with that in place then uh, it puts us in uh, a great position to do real virtual product uh, development uh, we can do virtual design reviews you don't need to necessarily have the parts in front of you you don't need to have the vid, uh, machine in front of you uh, you begin to do virtual builds and virtual manufacturing uh, where it's easy to find problems and it's easy to make changes uh, before you actually start to cut iron where it starts to get expensive to make a change and then when when you have some good visual representations uh, you can do things like market quality renderings so uh, uh, you, you can show a representation of the machine um, that is very realistic uh, without actually having to build one or ship it to the location where you want to have a certain background behind it. Uh, so uh, it, it becomes to uh, the, uh, making it visual is a key part of the vision for implementing PLM. The second part is uh, make value flow. And uh, if, if we've got things in place, if we've got a good bill of information in place, if we've got all the visual representations that we need, then we are able to have accessible information uh, easily available to the entire value stream. Uh, the information begins to flow from end to end. You can even think of it in a circular fashion here. Uh, and so now we've got value flowing throughout the value stream and, and it, it, it can reap some significant benefits for uh, the company that puts this in place. There's virtually unrestricted value that can flow and unrestricted information that go from one end to the other. So two parts of that vision, uh, make it visual uh, and make value flow. And for those companies then that uh, can understand this and, and uh, are willing to, to do the hard work to put it in place, uh, it's much, much more than just a, a good idea or something that's nice to talk about. There's some significant financial gain that, that can uh, fall into place as well. Uh, based on some uh, good industry research and my own personal and professional experience, a successful PLM implementation can uh, facilitate some huge benefits for a company willing to do the hard work to get there. Uh, profits go up. Your time to market uh, is quicker. Your time in the market is longer. And all of that translates then to increased profits. And so when you uh, think back to all those companies that we started this uh, little chat with, uh, they're in business to make money. Uh, and if they can make money, more money, uh, with less cost to themselves, then, then that's, uh, that's all goodness. Uh, and so putting in a, a good, effective PLM environment uh, will help them to get there uh, in, a, in a much quicker fashion. So moving on then, uh, what, what's the impact on the industry? Uh, what does this really mean? What's, what's the bigger picture? Well, take you on a little bit of a, of a history lesson. If you consider things like this, uh, the, the world that we live in now is just an, it's ever changing. And the pace of innovation and change is just staggering. This picture on the left of uh, the farmer behind his eight mule team, that's actually a picture of my wife's grandfather when he started farming. And he saw a transition from farming just a, a small uh, amount of land uh, be behind uh, teams of mules to operating large hundreds of horsepower uh, farm tractors. And he saw that in his lifetime. It was visible and it was tangible. Uh, and he went from just a small plot of land to uh, farming hundreds and hundreds of acres. Moving more into our current generation, uh, my generation and even more so the current generation are looking at things, that, the changes that happen in a much more subtle way. You don't always get to see them, but think, uh, back uh, to Apollo 13, um, the computers that they had to solve a real life and death situation, a real life and death emergency, was just scratching the surface to what we have available to us at our fingertips in our cell phones today. And we just take that for granted. Uh, it, it just happens. And in fact, we kind of expect it to happen. Well, some would say that we are in uh, a period of time that's called Industry 4.0. Uh, you've heard of the Industrial Revolution, I'm sure, back when uh, things started to be, become mechanized and steam power was in place. 
Fast forward to uh, to current uh, time, we're in the fourth iteration of the uh, industrial revolution, and that's what people are calling Industry 4.0, uh, and it is uh, uh, where we're we're seeing the degree of complexity in the products that are introduced, and the leverage of cyber physical systems just ever increasing, and the pace of those innovations coming into the marketplace uh, is just faster and faster all the time. This is important to us, and it's important when you think about PLM, because things are happening in a continuous and they're happening in a concurrent uh, process, and the, the way products are developed are no different. Uh, keeping up with things requires that we do things uh, much more concurrently than, than we used to do. And the information that we create today is going to be used almost immediately tomorrow for that next version, that, that next next improvement that you want to put in place. And so having an effective PLM system in an environment that supports it uh, is, is critical to the success that, that companies are going to have and, and they need to have that in place. And so this leads us into the, the concepts of a digital thread and a digital twin. Uh, perhaps you've heard of those, perhaps, you, perhaps not, but we at least need to recognize that they're there. Uh, the digital twin really is an exact, identical twin of the physical product, except it's done in the virtual space. And in order to do that, that means that you have to have all the, the, the physics and the simulation models absolutely correct. Uh, the CAD models that you build must be absolutely geometrically correct, and they must be kept current. And so it's really, uh, it's a never-ending process to, to keep developing that digital twin and the digital thread then is how information is passed from one end to the other, uh, from the physical twin uh, into the digital twin. You're, you're learning things that, uh, uh, that you get from the information and the sensors that you have on your actual product uh, that helps you continue to develop that twin and uh, um, the, the digital twin and continue to put some uh, improvements in your product as you go forward. Having uh, a, a digital representation or a digital twin in place is so much more, and I can't emphasize this much, it is so much more than just having a bunch of sensors on a machine that send you reams and reams of data that in some cases you don't know what you're gonna do with that. A lot of companies will fall into the trap of saying, I have a digital model, I have a digital twin because I've got sensors on my machine that are telling me how customers are using it. And I'm using that data to help them get uh, more out of that machine or, or that piece of equipment and, and use it more efficiently. Well, that is one use, but it's, only, it's ex extremely limiting. The digital twin is so much, much more than that, and there's so much more that can be gained by having it in place and having the right systems in place that, uh, that help you manage all that information. So then we can find ourselves in a situation where um, you can ask the question, is it real or is it Photoshop? Well, if we've got PLM in place, if we've got a good system there, if we've got the right tools linked together well, uh, and we've, we've implemented it well, it's literally gonna be hard to tell the difference. Uh, if that digital twin is operating effectively, um, you won't know if you've got that data from the twin or the, the physical product which is really where, where you wanna be. This also helps us get into uh, the Internet of Things or the Industrial Internet of Things. Uh, this is really, in a, in a nutshell, the Internet of Things is having everything connected. And you, you've heard of like uh, Amazon delivery or FedEx or whatever, they know where their trucks are all the time, they know where their packages are all the time. That's an example of leveraging the Internet of Things because uh, all of the, the pieces of information that they need uh, in order to, to know that, uh, they're leveraging the web, they're, they're leveraging the internet to know what that is. And, and having PLM in place then uh, lets you uh, manage and process those massive sets of data, that, that massive amount of information that you have in a very, very effective way. So uh, that's a lot of information that we've thrown at you here. Let me, uh, let me summarize here with just a, a few closing thoughts. Uh, PLM then is a strategic business approach. Uh, it is not a software suite, or it's not a particular uh, software tool. PLM is not exclusive to engineering. It does encompass the entire product lifecycle and it impacts the entire value stream. 
if you've got a good PLM system, then it'll provide the backbone for effective product and process information data flow throughout your entire value stream and in, in, in your, uh, your process that you have in place. Having effective PLM implementation can result in some significant results. Uh, it takes some work to get there, but, uh, but it can result in some very significant benefits for companies. And also, I'll, I'll uh, end with this. Uh, PLM is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Uh, it, it's not a one-and-done situation where you get the software you need, you put it in place, and then you can walk away and hope everything clicks uh, pretty well. Uh, we're continuing to learn. Your companies are continuing to grow. Uh, this is a journey, really, that's never going to be completed, and, and that's part of the exciting part about it is that if you've got the, the foundations in place, your PLM uh, understanding and your PLM system can grow with your company and make you that much more successful uh, as, as you continue uh, to move forward. So with that, uh, we'll open it up to whatever questions uh, we have. Yeah, thank you very much, Don. Uh, that was really insightful, really uh, taught us a lot, and we did get some questions from our audience. The first question I have here is uh, kind of going back to that idea of transforming from a bill of materials into a bill of information. What is what information is most important to include in a bill of information? Well, that's a that's a good question, uh, and some of it depends on what are the pieces of information that are important to your company. Uh, and if you can boil it down to just uh, a few key things um, to begin with, that, that would be the place to start. Obviously, you'd want to have uh, the 3D model uh, as a part of the bill of information. You'd want to have uh, any lightweight representation that you have of that 3D model. We, we didn't talk much about that, but rather uh, than the, the CAD model itself, there's, there's ways of... Uh, compressing that into lightweight versions that, that make it more portable. So those are two components. And then from a metadata perspective, the information that's describing that part, uh, my suggestion uh, at a bare minimum, you, you'd want to have a part number or the part identifier, whatever your company uses. You'd want to have the part name, uh, a brief description of what that is. Uh, you obviously want to know what material it's made out of, uh, and then its weight. And so those uh, four or five things then are, are some of the key components that then would, would drive uh, the rest of the business to know what they needed to do and, and add their value to, the, to the, uh, the, the overall perspective. Great. That's where I would start. <laughs> Great. That's, that's good, actionable things for, for individuals to do. Um, another question here, uh, coming from the idea of, you know, PLM in engineering kind of being a separate silo from the rest of the organization. What are some things I can do to encourage other departments outside of engineering to buy into the idea of PLM? Uh, that's, uh, that's another million dollar question itself. Um, I think uh, a, a good concept to, to keep in mind for this would be to work with the other parts of a company to, to recognize uh, what pieces of information that your product development or your engineering departments are creating that they need to have access to? What is it that they need to know? Or what are some of the, uh, the frustrations that they've had that they haven't been able to get information, say, from in engineering in a timely fashion? Having a good PLM system in place opens the door for that information to flow uh, very, very well and hopefully those frustrations then will, will start to subside. And, and a good example would be just the basic bill of material, or in this case, bill of information. If all they want to know is what are the parts that make up this product, well, if it's in PLM, they can get at it and they can uh, customize the view that they, that they see uh, to the way they like to see it, because it's all based on the same information. And so having, uh, having those systems in place that allow that to happen uh, can can break down some of those frustrations, and if you can find some common common ground to talk about, uh, that that'll help them understand that they have some value to get from it as well. They have input into it, and it's not just for engineering; it's for the whole uh, whole value stream to use. Great. I think we have time for one more question here. Um, obviously, we've talked a lot today about how PLM isn't technology; it's not a specific software suite or anything like that. With that said, uh, this question comes in, what kind of PLM environment do you recommend? Hmm. Okay, um, 
again, it's uh, it, it kind of depends on what's most important to the company that you're working for or working with. Uh, the, it, it's, I, would, I would say that uh, you don't want to go out there and try to find one tool or one vendor or one piece of the process uh, and then force it to, to be used throughout the value stream. There's a lot of different things that need to be done. And so a, a good PLM system is, is going to have the right tool for the right job uh, in place, linked and integrated together very, very well so that the information can flow from one piece of the equation to the next. And that may sound like a, a, a large uh, project to embark on, but the place to start is uh, maybe where is your company feeling the most pain right now? Uh, look at it from a whole overall perspective. What are the things that you want to solve over time? What are the priorities that you have assigned to those things? And then start working on the, the highest priority item first with a view to the second, and then build your system uh, one step at a time. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Don. That's all the time we have for questions today. There are a few questions that we didn't get to, so if we didn't get to your question, we will follow up with you directly. Um, and our webinar today will be available on demand, and we will send out the link to everybody who joined us today, and you'll see that come from us tomorrow. Thank you all for attending, and have a wonderful rest of your day.